Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck. Congratulations if you are on this video. That means you completed all of the videos or all five sections for unit one, and that's super exciting. So you're getting ready to take the quiz. So what I'm gonna have you do on each of these slides is I'm gonna have you pause the video, try the problem yourself, and then unpause the video and I'll work through it and you can see if you get it right. So go ahead right now and pause the video and try numbers one and two. And when you're done, then unpause the video and I'll work through them step by step and you can see if you, if you got them right. So for number one, you're finding the distance from M to E. So you're trying to figure out how far apart are these two points and you cannot just count because it's at a diagonal. It doesn't go right along the grid lines. So the formula goes like this. D equals, so distance equals, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. D stands for distance. And so um, it doesn't really matter which points you call the ones and which points you call the two, but once you label them, stick with them. So like for instance, I could call this my first x and my first y, and this can be my second x and my second y, and now it's just a matter of plugging them into the formula. So if I want to find the distance from M to E, remember, if you have M, E with nothing above it, it means distance from M to E. I make a big square root, and then I start filling stuff in. So X2 minus X1. So it's going to be 5 minus 1 squared. Plus, and then I take the Y's. So Y2 is 6 and negative six. So it's gonna be six minus negative six squared. Keep simplifying, five minus one is four. The minus a minus on the six, or the minus a negative changes to a plus, and so that ends up being 12. Four squared is 16, 12 squared is 144. If you add those together, I got 160. And the square root of 160 is not a nice number. Um, so you type square root 160 into your calculator and you should get approximately 12.65 units. Now, if you're not sure how to uh, type in a square root to your calculator, you're probably gonna have to hit the second key, which is like a shift or something like that. So you're gonna hit second and then it's usually above the X squared key. So look for the little square root sign on your calculator. If you need help finding it, let me know. Next, let's do number two. So midpoint, midpoint is when you add your X's divide by two and add your Y's divide by two. So it looks, the formula looks like this, X1 plus X2 divided by two and y1 plus y2 divided by two. So if I add the x's, five plus one divided by two, and then six plus negative six divided by two. So this ends up being six over two and zero over two, which is three comma zero. And that should be the middle or the midpoint. Now, what I would recommend is checking to see if it looks right. So three zero would be right three up zero. Does that look like the midpoint of that segment? I would say, yeah, it does. Cool, go to the next one. Please pause the video and try numbers three and four. All right, so there's two ways to find the distance from Y to U. One way is you could count it since the, these, uh, this number line is counting by ones, you could just count how far over they are from each other or how far apart they are. So it would go like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So technically 14 is your answer. Now I like to do it, just in case your number line is not this friendly, maybe it's not gonna count by ones or maybe it's gonna have fractions in it or something like that. The other way that you can do this problem is you can take the absolute value of one of the numbers uh, minus the other number. And so if we're finding the distance from y to u, y is at negative eight, u is at positive six. So we would go absolute value of negative eight minus six. Negative eight take away six is negative 14. And then the absolute value of negative 14 is positive 14. Ha, huh, look at that, we got the same answer. 
I recommend using um, the counting method if you can, but if the number line is not counting by ones, then you probably wanna use the absolute value method. Number four, find the midpoint of YU. So again, you could kind of count your way toward the middle, but on here, it's easier if you just add your two numbers. So X1 plus X2, and then divide by two. It's like finding an average between the two. So I would take negative eight plus six and divide by two. Negative eight plus six is negative two. Negative two divided by two is negative one. So negative one would be your midpoint. Does this look like the middle between y and u? Yeah, it does, because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I had to go seven uh, little tick marks from each end to get to that point at negative one. Please pause the video and try numbers five, six, and seven. So remember a vertex is like a corner. So here's angle three. The vertex is right at the corner. It's right here. And so M is your vertex. It's the point or the corner. Next, we need to name the sides of angle one. So the sides of angle one, first of all, let me highlight angle one. So angle one is right here. And the sides of that angle, one of them starts at M and goes out toward S. So I would call that ray MS. <clears throat> the other one starts at M and goes out towards U. And so I would call that ray MU. They both start at M and then go out from there. Classify angle SMC as right, acute, or obtuse. So if I erase this stuff here, let's find um, angle SMC. So if I trace it, S, M, C, that is this angle right here. To me, that looks like it's greater than 90 degrees, so obtuse. Please pause the video. Try numbers 8, 9, and 10. A ray has only one endpoint. True or false? That's true. A ray looks like this. And so, true. It only has one endpoint and then it goes off in the other direction forever. Collinear. Remember, you're looking for points that are in a line. So they have to be in a straight line. So when I see this picture, I see A and B and C all right in a straight line. So A, B, and C are collinear. Number 10, give another name for plane P. So when you name a plane, you can use the cursive letter down in the corner, or you can pick three non-collinear points. They cannot be in a straight line. So I could call this plane, and then maybe I would go A, B, D, for instance, because A, B, and D are not all in a straight line, but those three points are on the flat surface. You could have also used other combinations like plain um, A, C, E. Any three points, you only pick three. And you can't pick less than three. You have to pick exactly three points to name your plane. Please pause the video. Try number 11. So planes P and N Plane P, you can see, is this plane right here. And plane uh, N is this plane over here. And the place where they cross is right here. And so how do we name that spot where they cross? Well, technically, planes go on forever and ever in both directions. So they would cross at line AB. Line AB. Don't forget, this right here is line AB. This right here is segment AB. And this right here with nothing above it is distance from A to B. So that's not really part of the answer, but that's just something that you need to keep, keep straight. Please try number 12 and pause the video. All right, 
Angle five is right there in the green, and you can see its vertex is right here. That's the corner, so T is your answer. Please try number 13 and then unpause the video. So we have the measure of a supplement of an angle is 46 less than the measure of the angle. Find the measure of the angles. First thing I see is the word supplement. Supplement means they add up to 180, supplementary. So something plus something is going to add up to 180. Since I don't know what either angle is, I call the first angle X. The other angle has to be 46 less than that one. So the other angle will be x minus 46. Aha, there is the equation. We have two angles. One of them's 46 less than the other one, and they are supplementary. They add up to 180. So now x plus x is 2x uh, minus 46 equals 180. Add your 46 to the other side. We have 2x equals, <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly do this on my calculator to make sure I get it right, 226, and then divide by 2, and x is 113. Now, 113 degrees is the size of one of the angles. How do we find the other one? Well, they have to be supplementary, so I think the quickest way is just to take 180 minus 113, and 180 minus 113 is 67 degrees. The other thing I could have done is I could have plugged my 113 in right here and done 113 minus 46, I should also get 67 degrees. Last one, please pause the video and try number 14. So it wants us to find the measure of angle NSP. Remember when you see this M, it means measure. So NSP, when I look, is this angle right there highlighted in pink. Um, I'm noticing this 90 degree symbol in this corner. And since we have a straight line right here, that means over here will also be 90 degrees. So NSP by itself is not 90, but if we take those two angles, the 5x plus the x, these two right in here, together they should equal 90. So that means 6x equals 90. And if you divide by 6, we get x equals 15. But that is not our final answer. Remember, we have to find the measure of angle NSP. So the measure of angle NSP, um, I'm going to take that 15 and I'm going to plug it in to there, to the x next to the 5. So it's going to be 5 times 15. 5 times 15 is 75 degrees, and that would be the measure of angle NSP. So that's it um, as far as this video goes, but please now go on and try the review worksheet for Unit 1. And when you're done with the review worksheet, then you can take the Unit 1 uh, quiz on Schoology. Um, one thing about when you take the quiz, it is resumable. So if you only get partway through, you can go back and finish. However, once you finish a question and submit that question, you cannot go back and change that question. So keep that in mind as you take the quiz. Good luck. If you need any help, please uh, send me a Schoology message. Thank you. Have a great day.